What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today we're back at Insurance Auto Auctions here in Oklahoma City for another walk around. Today we're going to look at a bunch of pickup trucks, see if we can find anything worth bidding on and buying, and we're going to take a look at some RVs and maybe even some motorhomes. So I guess I'm going to start with this Vengeance. You guys know I love RVs, campers. I really enjoy checking them out. I don't know if you guys enjoy them so much, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in this video looking at things like this but I'm always curious to see what we can find out here uh, I kind of low-key really want one of these <laughs> okay maybe not so low-key I really I really do want one of these now how I'm gonna get from here all the way up to there I don't exactly know and I don't think there's very far we can get into this because the slide is actually uh, holding us up here. I found a way in through the back. So this is a toy hauler is what this is. I didn't even realize that, but there's a ramp right there that goes down and you can, I guess, just roll your toys right on in here. These are the steps for the front. Looks like a ladder for the back. And well, you can't get through here because this door is in the way. There's a bathroom back here in the toy hauler too. Very nice. I was hoping this would take us into the front, but uh, no, it will not. You can kind of see in there though. All right, well, we'll climb out and maybe I'll just go ahead and walk my way over to the front and try to jump in here just to get a better view of this thing. It is absolutely huge, guys. Okay. I better turn the camera off for this. Something tells me this isn't going to work out well for me. All right. Well, I climbed up. I made it in. Wow. This is tall. I mean, this is, this almost feels like you're in a home. It's definitely luxurious feeling when you walk in here. Um, yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. You got some stairs that lead up probably to a bathroom right here. Oh, wow. That's a good size bathroom for a camper that's not bad at all look at that shower you got your sink looks like two doors into the bedroom Ooh, yes all right boy i could do this wow yeah this is nice you got your own little heat and air conditioner right above your head right above the master bed there Looks like a good queen size bed. You got a little end table on both sides. Bigger one over there. This is decent. Look at the mirrors. Oh man. Plenty of storage for clothes. <sighs> yeah, I like this guys. This is, this is nice. This is really nice. <laughs> it's outside of my price range, but it's nice. You've got a slide right here so this pops out and slides out to open up the kitchen look at that refrigerator over there look at that big beautiful couch uh, this slides out this pops out to give you more room there and then of course back in the back you've got your uh you got your uh, toy storage now climbing out without the stairs is a little bit of fun because there's you know just jump all right this is a little big honestly uh this is not something i would want to try hauling uh, it's obviously a fifth wheel. This is not a, a bumper pull, but she's a big, big camper. All right, let's move on over to the pickup trucks. You got a lot of wrecks and fleet lease vehicles coming in here. Ouch. Some of these are some of these are pretty rough. Look, this one's a fire. How much you want to bet it still runs? This is not one that looks like it burnt down. It looks like it sat next to something that caught on fire. Yeah. Man, that's totally fixable. Yeah, scrape off the old paint and spray it. Call it a day. That's what I would do. You'd never know. You'd never know. I'll bet the interior is still in decent shape. Let's take a quick look. How's it smell? It actually smells good. It doesn't smell like fire at all in here. Yeah, it was just parked too close to something that got lit up. That's all it is. Now, I'm sure this is made of aluminum. So might be a little bit of a structural integrity issues but I mean none of this is actually structural this is all more cosmetic you're gonna need handles you're gonna need a mirror but I'd be willing to bet that you could clear all this off yeah so mirror door handles definitely oh this paint is melted too I would blend it 
that's what I would do. I would take this to a body paint shop. I'd say sand this all down to bare metal, prime it, and then repaint it, and just try your best to blend it. It's white, so it should be relatively easy to do. The doors still work, they're locked. But yes, the door handles, no, they might not work anymore. This is melted a little bit here. Overall though, this is not that big of a deal to me. Tail light needs to be replaced too. It's a high country, Silverado, long bed dually. This is decent guys. This is really decent. This is a perfect example of some of the stuff that's hiding out here. You gotta go looking for it, you know? But if you take the time to go look around, 101,000 miles. There it goes. Dirty Max diesel. Engine power is reduced, water and fuel. Yeah, I'll bet there is. I'll bet there is. I'm assuming the fire department came out in full force with a water hose. Coolant low, water and fuel, engine power reduced. 101,000 miles, that is not bad. Do the brakes work? Brake light is on. Feels like we got decent brakes. We got heated and cooled seats, climate control. We'll try it out. Kick it on down to about 70. Wi-Fi network connected. I don't care. Let's turn it on auto. Got the cooled seats going. Oh, this is, yeah, this is, this is it right here. This is it right here. All day. I'd buy this all day. You think I care about the damage to the side? Not at all. It smells good. You got four wheel drive, trailer brake controller. I mean, you got everything. This thing has everything. E-brake is on. That's why the brake light is on. Let's put it in gear. Goes forwards. Brakes feel great. Backwards. Yeah, brakes are awesome. Gauges all look good. You've got almost a full tank of diesel. Oil pressure is like 80 PSI. Battery's charging nicely. Check out this important window. Of course it works. The other side, it does work. Yeah, it works. What about that one? That one works too. All right, what more do you want? Um, the AC on the other hand, I'm not feeling any cold air. So, yeah, it's safe to say that the air conditioning is not functioning in this. No, AC's not working. We'll go ahead and turn it off because it makes too much noise. Rev's decent, sounds good. Why don't we pop the hood? Got the Bose stereo. This is, this is a nice truck. I think somebody is going to get this at a good deal. Cracked windshield, but no big deal there. Listen to her purr. Purrs like a kitten, man. Alright, well that's one. I knew we'd find at least one good one out here. I got a feeling there's more. So let's continue on and see what else we can find. I still love this old Chevy right here. It's just, this one's so far gone, guys. It's, I promise you there's frame damage, the body's tore up, the interior's tore up. It's got an amazing hood though. I really like the hood. It's got hail damage. I mean, it's just, it's everything that you don't want in a vehicle unfortunately otherwise i'd love to bring that to the channel and try to save it i saw the silverado but i can also see the front end doesn't exist anymore so we'll uh pass on that one uh this ford might have some slight frame damage i'm just guessing oh wow yeah yeah i think it's uh i think it's safe to say that there's there's the potential for frame damage on this one guys so <laughs> let's continue on and see what else we can find we're just going to run through these pretty quick i'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time looking at everything i'm looking for some deals that's what i'm out here searching for today is the hidden gems that uh you actually got to come out and just really look for to find i saw that dirty max 2500 and i was i was all about it 
I did. I saw it from the distance and I was like, man, unfortunately it's got a, yeah, the frame is definitely tweaked pretty hardcore on that one. Those are, those are great trucks right there, guys. What year is this? It's a 2005. Wow. Yeah, that frame is trash. Dang. Great parts truck though. Excellent parts truck. Unless you feel like putting a frame in it, which I don't. Um, oh, wow. I just love when these things burn to the ground because you just kind of look at them and you're like, really? There's almost no truck left. That's, that's crazy. I understand that aluminum is more lightweight and I, I just, I miss the days when things were made out of steel. You know, <laughs> the old days. Uh, a car might burn down, but the whole shell was left. You know, <laughs> you could literally just build off of what was left of it. It ain't like that today. These things catch on fire. There is nothing left of them when it's over. I like this old school Ram right here. Dodge, I'm sorry. It's a Dodge, I think. They didn't call it Ram in the, uh, in the 90s and the early 2000s. Boy, she's, she's really rough. The biohazard. I don't know what happened to my Ford truck. I've been waiting for that thing for what seems like months to come up for sale. Oh, this is a theft recovery. Definitely a theft recovery. There's nothing left of this. They took, they took everything. Everything. Catalytic converters, engine, transmission, everything. It's all gone. All gone. They even took the VIN number. <laughs> they, they took, they took everything on this one. They literally busted the windshield to cut out the VIN number of this. That's for, oh, there's my truck. There it is right there. So I guess it just keeps getting moved around. I, this is one that I still intend on buying. Um, if, if it ever comes up for sale, uh, I don't know. Coyote engine, we don't know the mileage. We don't know anything about it. It's a 2016, it's definitely got some damage. It was stolen, it's a theft recovery. The interior's been torn apart and it's got no wheels, a little bit of damage to the bed. But this is still something that I think I'd be, I think I'd be interested in bidding on, potentially winning. The handle's broken on this side. The gas cap is completely broken and missing, the cover I mean, but it's one of those, I think it'd be fun to get it. I've got some wheels for it at the house already. We could throw some wheels on it and uh, run it down to a local Ford dealership or call a locksmith, see if we can't get a key cut for this one and just find out if it runs. So obviously I'm gonna bid very conservatively on this because we don't know anything about it. Speaking of wheels, well, hell, they wouldn't miss these wheels. These wheels would be perfect. Same truck, 2017, yeah. You know what, let me put this camera down for a minute, guys. I'm gonna swap these wheels over to that one. No, I'm kidding. I don't, can't do that. Can't do that. I wish we could though. I wish we could. That would save me a bit of a hassle and having it towed with no wheels is probably not gonna be cheap. Nice Chevy there. Here's another one. All these are pretty well wrecked, guys, as you can imagine. It's a, it's a it's salvage yard. So what most of the cars are here for, they've been wrecked. Well, that's nice. Nice old Ram blown bags oh, we might be running short guys i've i'm not seeing a whole lot that looks promising here no i do see a uh an old school silverado over here i'm willing to take a look at that may not be wrecked there's that stolen truck again we've seen that one like two or three times so no reason going back and looking at that i think this might be the last one here guys just a decent old chevy 1500 it doesn't look like it's wrecked. Doesn't look like it's stolen either. It says it's a run and drive with 277,000 miles on the odometer. I wonder why it's here though. It's an insurance car. Uh, okay. So let's carefully walk around it and see if we can find any substantial damage that would tell us why it's here. There's a dent in the bed where somebody threw a Wiley e. Coyote. You guys remember Wiley e. Coyote? Probably not. That used to, that, that's a joke right there. The dent is from where Wiley e. Coyote got going too fast and bang, ran right into the truck. That's what they're trying to say. So I'm thinking that dent was there before this thing ended up at the salvage auction. Looks like it's got pretty decent tires. I'm gonna throw my bag up here gently. This is, uh, this is not too shabby, guys. 
take a look at the interior. Oh, it's got power too. This is pretty gnarly. Looks like somebody tried to stitch all that back together. It didn't go very well. It doesn't smell the greatest. It does have a headliner. I mean, you know, it's got almost 300,000 miles. What do you want from it? It runs. Low fuel. Let's see what we got on the dash here. We're greeted with a flashing brake light. Low fuel, change engine oil, service engine soon. Boy, no joke, it's completely out of gas. Completely out of gas. Here's the thing. It looks like somebody cut a brand new key for it, and the original key was sitting right here. This is the original key was sitting right there and <laughs> looks like somebody came out here and made a made a new key for the old girl you got a few power outlets here that's nice a little cubby storage right there air conditioning it actually feels like it's getting cold i don't know it runs pretty rough let's turn off the e-brake and hopefully that light stops flashing it did so we have a check engine light we have an airbag light brakes feel good oil pressure is good now it shows half a tank of gas so obviously the cinder has got a little something going on with it reverse yes drive let's rev it up i mean it revs up all right air conditioning is a no-go if it's working it's barely working like it's barely cool we have four-wheel drive we'll give it a try put it in four high and it's in four high two-wheel drive I heard it switch back the light confirms it you know important window works what about the less important window also works you know honestly it's a little rough but if you need a cheap truck something relatively economical and reliable well here you go this really is not a bad truck it may not be the prettiest what is it a 5.3 5.3 vortec i'm assuming it's a 5.3 idle's a little erratic air conditioning does not work looks like somebody recently put a new alternator on it though it runs what do you want you know i mean it runs and it goes into gear why it's here i I just, I don't know. I don't see any reason for this thing to be sitting here. Tires, it's got a set. They actually have pretty decent tread. They'll probably last you a while. Z71 like a Cadillac. It's an LS package, so obviously you don't get, you don't get many options. And you've got these awkward doors here, which I've never cared for these half doors, but it's got them and you do have back seats, although not much. It could make a decent truck for somebody. Is this one that I'm personally interested in? No. No, I'm not. I'm just saying that if somebody was looking for something relatively cheap that could get them where they need to go, you know, a work truck maybe, a contractor, somebody getting ready to start their own business, you know, money's tight. you got to be careful how much you spend. Well, something like this could be great because parts are readily available, relatively cheap, and these things are just notoriously reliable. So there you go. I knew out of all of these, we could at least find one. So we're gonna continue on and uh, take a look at a couple more campers maybe, and definitely a couple of these uh, recreational vehicles. The ones that have the engines in them, you know, where they, uh, where they can, you can drive your home around with you. I, I, I'm not sure which ones I like better. If I'm, if I'm completely honest, I think I like these pull behinds better. I do, um, because you don't always wanna drive with these ginormous things being pulled behind you, you know? And with something like this, a bumper pull, a fifth wheel, the good thing about them is you can drop them. So yeah, you gotta have your truck, but you can take this thing somewhere, drop it off, and then you can go cruise around in your truck. Whereas with one of the RV style vehicles, you know, you can't drop your trailer. It's literally attached to your vehicle. And you know, that makes going through drive-throughs a lot of fun, I would imagine. I've never done it nor do I ever want to, but I'm just saying, uh, if it was up to me, I would get one of these. This would be, golly, this would absolutely be it for me. Look at this. Wow. Oh, these are so nice. And the slide isn't even out and there's still room to walk. You see what I mean? Oh, look, black ice. 
Yeah, this is, it's just outside of my budget. I don't have the money for something like this right now. Um, cars are one thing. I'll buy cars all day long, but you know, an RV, a camper, that's totally different. Totally different. I wonder why this is here. You got little bunk beds and look at the low light quality of this camera. That's insane. Where I'm standing, I can't even see all the way to the wall. But I'm looking on the screen, and I can literally see the wall. In person, you can't see it. It's completely pitch black back there. So pretty cool. You got a bunk bed for your kids. You got a really nice bathroom right here. This is nice. No joke. I'm wondering if this is hail damage, or... I don't know. I'll take it, though. You've got a, a door at the bathroom. That's a little different, but okay. Refrigerator, stainless steel, stainless steel stove and oven, stainless steel microwave. Wow, a nice dinette. Like this is this is super luxurious. I like this. Okay, maybe it's not luxurious. It's not like this has real granite or anything. It's all particle board fake stuff, but still, to me, this is pretty nice. You got your nice little stereo system. Looks like you used to have a television here. People always take the they always take the TVs. <laughs> <laughs> the TVs don't go with them. You got a nice queen size bed back here with again end tables with storage. You've got mirrors where you put your shirts and pants. Of course, you got a little privacy. Although with as thin as these walls are, I'll be honest with you, I, I <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that's gonna work. Um, especially if you got kids, like you're gonna have to you be able to hear everything. You, you hear everything in this. How do I? How do I? There we go. Get out of this. Uh, it's a little warm in there too. So yeah, uh, this this would honestly be pretty epic. Looks like you got some storage space over here too. Lots of storage on the outside. This is pretty nice. It's a 2017 Forest River Vibe, and why it's here, I don't know. It says Lost Type Other. So your guess is as good as mine. I think I think my 1500 would honestly pull this pretty well. Maybe this was stolen or something. Overall though, it looks to be in pretty good condition. I'll take a quick walk around it, but I can only imagine how much something like this is gonna go for. And, and that's the big deterrent on these is how expensive this stuff is. It's, it's a glorified trailer. In fact, oh, oh wow. There it is. Somebody went through the trees with it. I don't know if you can really see that all that well, but yep, the whole roof is tore up. There's some tree limbs right there. Never mind. <laughs> I think I'm good on this. I'm glad I finished looking around it because I was I was just thinking, man, this is decent. This is not decent. And that's another reason I don't want one of these. Good Lord, man. Could you imagine misjudging the height of something and ripping the roof off? Oh, the liability. I know you've got insurance. But still, uh, <laughs> just no, I don't, uh, I don't want that. If I were to get one of these travel trailers, it's got to be something smaller, like that Coleman across the street that we looked at. That one is, it's, it's little bitty. It's something that I think I could easily manage. I wouldn't have to worry about going through drive throughs I don't want to stress over any of that. Uh, here's another one. God, this little one, this Sportsman Classic's kind of cute. We'll take a look at this in a second. This is a Mallard. See, this one looks relatively small, although it looks like somebody ran it into something too. <laughs> it's, it's got a little bit of scuffage right there and some of the trim up top is actually ripped off. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, uh, yeah, somebody, oh, is the back caved in or something? <sighs> you just don't know until you walk around these things and take a look at them, guys. Oh, wow, okay. Man, what happened there? How does that even, how does that even happen? I don't know, obviously it was some type of an accident. Good Lord. Yeah, this side is all, dam it's really damaged on this side as well, okay. Oh, well the next one I wanted to look at was this one, but it looks like somebody ripped the back end off of it. It looks like they got stuck on something and just ripped it off. I don't know, look at this. Oh, wow. Yeah, it almost looks like somebody drove up under it, doesn't it? 
you know, with the way people drive these days too, <laughs> it, I, I'm hesitant to even come out here and do these walk arounds anymore. Like the traffic out here, and I've driven, I've driven all over the place, guys. I've driven Chicago and New York City. I, I, I've been everywhere, Los Angeles. I've been on the 405, okay? So I understand traffic. And I know that as far as like the sheer quantity of people on the road is concerned, Oklahoma is nothing compared to these big cities. I get that, but there's a difference, all right? I can be on the 405 and generally, not always, but generally, it seems like people know where they're going. People are generally already in the lane, even if you have to sit and stand still traffic, back to back traffic, bumper to bumper, nobody's moving. Everybody seems to know where they're going for the most part, and they know which lanes to be in, and they're in those lanes ahead of times. Not always, but it was my experience when I was in LA that that's how it was. And we've actually already looked at this one, so there's no reason in looking at this one again. Um, it's not like that in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, everybody's driving around with Oklahoma plates, so they obviously live here, but none of them seem to know where they're going or what lane they need to be in. So people are always doing 20 to 30 miles an hour over the speed limit, which I get it, it's normal pretty much anywhere, but they're always cutting through lanes. They will cut you off to get one car length ahead of you. And then they will slam on their brakes because there was no room for them to cut you off to begin with. The, it's just the mentality of the people that drive around out here it's different. It's really different. And unless you've driven here, you won't understand what I'm talking about, unless you live in a similar place. But, you know, I've been all over the country. I've driven all over the place, guys. In Oklahoma, aside from Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth, probably the worst drivers I have ever seen in my whole life. But Oklahoma is a close second to them. Let's continue. I can get sidetracked pretty easy, guys. I'm sorry. I get I get frustrated because my drive here today, I actually got run off the road by a semi, a car hauler. And coincidentally, that car hauler is sitting in the parking lot right now. He was actually coming here. I was next to him in the right lane, you know, the slow lane where everybody's supposed to be. I was driving in the proper lane. I was going the speed limit when out of nowhere, he came halfway into my lane and forced me off the road. Because where are you going to go? Where are you gonna go when you've got a semi coming into your lane? So I was forced halfway off the road. So I did the right thing. I blared my horn hoping to get his attention. He never moved. He just sat there taking up two lanes, halfway in my lane and halfway in his lane. So I hit the gas and I quickly got away from him. And by the time I was pulling into the uh, parking lot out here, he pulled in right with me and I thought we're gonna have a problem. Thankfully, no problem. It would have been nice if he would have come up to me and said, hey, I wasn't paying attention, I was playing on my phone, I'm sorry, something. You know, it would have been, but, but people don't do that either. People don't apologize anymore. Um, if anything, they'll just flip you the bird and uh, blame you. Somehow it would have been my fault that he came into my lane. All right, I'm done. Now let's take a closer look at this, it stinks. It smells very, very old. Um, I'm guessing this is like, what, 95, maybe 96? Uh, it's, it smells so musty and, and old, but at the same time, I kind of like it. It's about time we get another one, guys, I, I think. Yeah, look at the color scheme, man. How cool is this? These old colors, probably got mouse poop. Yeah, there's there's mouse poop in here. So you got uh, some sun damage to maybe even a little water damage. I can't tell for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some mice built a... A nest in the oven. That's a good place for them. Probably some under here too. I'm gonna end up with the bubonic plague. No, nothing under there. Messing around with these things. There's your controls for the tanks, the generator, all of that stuff. I'm sure yeah, everything's everything's dead as a doornail. We got a refrigerator here. Oh, thank God there's nothing in it. And it honestly doesn't smell that bad. Doesn't smell that bad at all. You got a shower here. There's really not any privacy. I guess that's what this door is for. Oh, it doesn't work. It's, oh, that's not a door, I don't think. What do you do, open this door or something to cover? I don't know, yeah, I guess, I guess that's what you do, okay. Decent bathroom. Nothing's broken. Over here, you got a really nice bed. If this went cheap enough, I'd buy this. I'd absolutely buy this. The floors are solid. What is this, a mirror? What is going on here? Does this come out? What? This looks like, or either that or it just got really, really wet. 
Maybe that's what happened. Oh, no, it's on hinges. It's supposed to. Well, there. Ugh. Gross. There's dead bugs and things in there. This, this definitely got wet at some point. Looks like a little makeup area. You know, you got your little lights over here. Definitely pretty roomy in here. Not too shabby. What is this? Just some oddball table? Okay, I don't know what that is. We'll close it. You've got your uh, heat and air conditioning. You know, I take a chance on this, I guess. It's got an aftermarket microwave. It's not bolted down, so that's not good. Lots of storage. Yeah, this isn't too bad, guys. And these, these usually go for nothing. Nobody, nobody wants these, and, and I understand why. They're, the older these things get, the more likely they're gonna catch on fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? And on top of that, there are a lot of RV parks that will not allow you to bring something like this into their RV park because of the risk of fire as they get older. These older ones were not very safe. So a lot of places have limits on how old some of these things can be for you to uh, even bring them into the lot. So it can make it really difficult. This one is a 1995 Ford Econoline and it's America Can Cars for Kids. So that's a, it's a good cause. It's a good cause. You guys know I like these. Uh, I like the ones that are more like charitable donation type things. Uh, I, I can get down with that. Looks like you got your batteries over here, your cable for plugging in, and some other storage. Uh, this may be the uh, propane actually. Hold on. Let's take a, let's take a look. Uh, this is your one uh, Onan Microlite 4000 generator. Lightweight, 172 pounds. All right, so that is your generator. I don't know where the, uh, I don't know where the house batteries are. Sometimes they put them under the hood. Discount tire. There's your books, crank windows. Does it have keys? It does. I'll give it a shot. Something tells me she's been parked a long time and most likely she isn't gonna run. It's probably gonna have some fuel system problems. Also looks like there could be a little bit of leakage from that seam there. A Jamboree Sport by Fleetwood. Well, all right. Let's see what engine is in this thing. Ugh. Oh, well, you can't see you can't see anything under here, can you? Uh, motorcraft, motorcraft, motorcraft. 7.5 liter. All right, it's got a big motor. It's got a it's got a big motor. That's good because you're gonna want that. Um, assuming this is all gasoline, since it says EFI. Looks like we just throw a jump right here, I guess. Now let's see if we can get this thing to run. All right, I got a jump on it. I hear things dinging inside. I'd buy this. Like, if it goes like the last one did that I bought, I would absolutely buy this. Let's see what it does. We'll prime it a couple times. It says it's got almost a full tank of gas. Ah, oh, well that figures. Sometimes I just don't get a good bite on these, uh, on these terminals here. Let's try it again. I don't mind taking a risk on this. <laughs> it runs. It's backfiring. It's spitting and sputting. I guarantee you old fuel. I'm surprised it runs, to be honest with you. I have no doubt this thing has been parked for a long, long time. I'm gonna turn on the AC. I don't expect that it's gonna work. Somebody left the headlights on? No, they didn't. It does run though. It's not great, but it runs. Power steering works. Brakes. Forwards, yes. Backwards, yes. <laughs> um, air conditioning is cold, no joke, it's got cold AC. Oh, that's a wrap, guys. Yeah.
Yeah, that's a wrap. That's. I'm gonna. Oh, the e-brake was on and it still moved. <laughs> okay, there we go. So yeah, it doesn't run great, but it does run. Sure is rattling back here. Oh, the fuel cap is missing. Oh no. No. You know how much water is probably in that gas tank. A little bit of damage back here. Looks like a nice little cubby hole where you got some radiator soft leak. Lots of fluids. Turn signal's on. Ugh, oh, that exhaust smells. I mean, it not running the greatest but it's got good tires too bf goodrich tires it seems like it's running better you're gonna have to get that water out of that gasoline is it charging it is 14.1 volts i think i'm gonna i'm gonna try to buy this guys i do i do i have no use for it i don't know what i would ever do with this thing it's kind of a, a heap. Somebody's been messing around down there in the breakers. Uh, there's some fuses and things. I have no idea what all that does. Power converter. DC distribution. So that's probably for the generator. Um, I assume we have no house lights. Oh, we do. They actually operate. Yeah, we have some lights. All right. Does any of this stuff come on? It does. Pump on. Oh, it tried to start the generator. It did. It tries to start the generator. It runs. The generator runs. Okay, not well. <laughs> not well. We have a water pump. It has water. Are you kidding me? Okay, we're gonna leave it alone. Water heater, gray water tank, black water, ooh, it's half full. Fresh water, half full. Battery, charged up, LPG, full of uh, full of propane. We won't mess with that. So yeah, guys, I think I'm gonna give this one a shot, man. I do. Um, look at this little bed up here. I don't know if I'd trust that. A place for a flat screen TV, a small one, I guess. This is This is not too shabby. And how many miles? It's only got 111,000, which is a lot for one of these. It's actually quite a bit. Cold air. Looks like it's been parked for a long time, almost a full tank of gas. I would buy this in a heartbeat and drive it home. What do you guys think? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I had a great time making this video for you. And I think I found some interesting things that maybe I'll bid on one or two of them. Hint, hint. We'll see what happens. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. I truly appreciate that. And drop your comments down below. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.